Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, That's Ready Homeschool. My name is Mrs. T. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into our science curriculum picks for my kindergartner, and I'm so excited. Now, if you haven't seen yet my curriculum pick video that I posted back in May, I believe, I will post it in the description down below. Now, there are a lot of components here that are in common. There's nothing like crazy, but there are some changes here between that last video and this one. The most notable change I would say is how I've classified science. So in my original curriculum pick video, I had science, ecology, and healthy living all broken out into separate segments, but I'm actually gonna take those three disciplines and kind of bring them all together into one umbrella of science, which means we are going to be doing science now 180 days, so every day of the school year, but we're going to be pulling from different disciplines, but it's all gonna be under this umbrella of science, which is really nice. The other big change here is I do have um, a different selection for my health and wellness. So I actually found something that I'm like really, really excited about. So we're gonna talk about that as well. All right, let's go ahead and start with our very first piece of curriculum um, that we are going to be leveraging. And that's going to be Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding by Bernard J. Neville. This is a program that is two years worth of um, science and it is an interdisciplinary science approach and it is spirals. The idea here is you're not just learning life sciences or chemistry or physics, but rather you're learning building blocks of all of these and you're kind of spiraling back to it throughout the entirety of this program, which does go until eighth grade with other volumes. So this book is specifically recommended for K through second, but it is only again two years worth of um, content. What they recommend with a younger student or younger students like a kindergarten level is to take year number one and split it into two. And that is what we are going to do. Now, the actual book itself is a little bit complicated in how it's set up. Knowing which topic to go to next is a little hard to navigate. So I did buy the Early Elementary Science Education book by Shannon Jordan, which does kind of break that down in a very simple way. And this has been a lifesaver with planning. Now this year we are only going to be covering 11 topics and those are going to be outlined here. Solids, liquids and gases, gravity, energy, matter. Um, we're going to be talking about day and night and rotation, compasses and more. And I'm really, really excited about that program. Now, it did not specifically call out or requ any required reading, but they did have recommended books uh, for us to pick up, like a big list. And I have picked and chosen a few books from their recommendation. So we are actually gonna be reading 15 uh, picture books to support this program. Now to finish this in the duration of our 36 week school year, it equates to about on average two days of um, science of building foundations every week, but some weeks will need three days. So between two and three days focusing on this, which is actually not too bad. I'm pretty excited. Okay, next piece of curriculum I wanna talk about was previously categorized as ecology, and that is going to be our Project Learning Trees Environmental Education Activity Guide. Now I have selected out, out of this book 17 activities and projects that we are going to be doing um, in this upcoming school year, which equates to one activity approximately every other week. So not too bad either. I'm really, I'm really excited about this one. If you're interested in seeing a full flip through of this, I will link it mighty flip through in the description down below, but we will be doing um, 17 projects from here. And those 17 projects are going to support a number of higher level themes, which is like diversity in nature, interrelationships, we're going to be covering um, change, patterns, and more. There's actually a lot of topics that we're going to be talking about specifically in here. Now, like BFSU, most of the activities in here do not require a specific book. However, there's a lot of recommended reading. So I have curated a list of 18 books. Most of them are picture books, but some will be reference books that we are just kind of looking at and exploring that we are going to use to support those 17 projects. And on to the next piece of curriculum. The next one that we are going to be using that's kind of supporting this like nature study, this ecology is going to be Blossom and Root Level Zero, My Outdoor Classroom. Now this one I purchased as part of a bundle and I, I was going back and forth. Like, do I even use this? Because a lot of like focusing on things that I don't necessarily want us to focus on. So we are going to use it, but we are going to use it lightly. And to be frank, you guys, 
If it becomes too much, we probably will end up dropping it. However, there are only two books that we are really going to be focusing on from this uh, curriculum. And this does have like 36 weeks worth of lessons, 35 of which I'm, I'm relatively sort of interested in, but they include things like animal studies, tree and seed observations and logs, learning about things like food chains, life cycles, animal houses, and more. So it's definitely more focused on a gentle approach to observing nature and being a part of nature, but it doesn't go as deep as like Project Learning Tree. And it does definitely have a higher emphasis on like specific animals as well. So there's like a period of time you'll be like studying like chipmunks versus squirrels, for example. Um, and you don't, you definitely don't get anything like that in Project Learning Tree. But anyway, to do this, we are going to target just weekly, one sitting, nothing too long, where we read the story and we do the activity um, in a very light, easy breezy kind of way. Okay, next piece of curriculum. All right, let's talk about health. I am so excited, you guys. So last curriculum pick video, I really didn't know what we were gonna do for health. I had ideas of free resources, but I just wasn't satisfied. Like when I was planning it, I was just, I felt like it was just kind of, I don't know, it wasn't what I wanted. And I did find something though that I'm really excited about. And this is from Studies Weekly. It is their health and wellness um, offering. So basically, if you haven't seen Studies Weekly before, I actually had something very similar growing up, I think for like history, but basically you get a, it's a 32 week program and you get this little magazine or newspaper, I should say, that is given to your child that talks about a specific topic. And you read the different articles, you do different hands-on things, there's some online portions if you want to, there are assessments, and a lot of different things that you can do with this program. I'm really excited about this because this is really focusing on a an age-appropriate light view of like mental health, academic health, relationships, and more. It just really focuses on like a good baseline. So it's very light. It's 32 weeks, and most of these weeks are going to be between three and four days. But occasionally there are a couple that have like more, there's like more, I guess, content and activities that could go to five days but it's very, very, very brief periods of time that you're focusing on it. So um, yeah, so that's gonna be our health and we're gonna have our daily newspaper that we're gonna read our small little articles, which are like a sentence or two at this age. I'm really excited about it. Uh, now this one has no literature associated to, with it and we are not going to be adding anything to support this curriculum. Now also with health and awareness, that's only 32 weeks. So I did decide I still wanted to pull through from the rights, respect and responsibility or three R's curriculum. It's it's available online for free from the Advocates for Youth. They have in the kindergarten level three different themes um, and three different topics and lessons. So one has to do with differences in families. Another one is like human body, like the basics of the human body. And then the other one is focusing on your child speaking up, knowing what their space is and knowing what somebody else's space is and how to have respect for our space and someone else's. So I will be trying to add in those three, but that will go after Studies Weekly at the end of the year. That, and that requires one picture book um, across those three lessons, so not too bad. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is space. So for the building foundations, they recommend your child having an idea of space as a whole, uh, but they don't specifically dive into learning about space. So I decided that we are going to take a year long approach to space and I'm using a reference book that we had here already, which is from DK called Space, a visual encyclopedia. And what we are going to do is approximately once a month, we are going to focus on one portion of our solar system. So the sun, the earth and the moon, the different planets, um, Pluto and beyond, for example. And we are going to actually create a model. They have those styrofoam little balls uh, that you get from like craft stores. We are going to paint them, put a paper clip in it, hang it up with some string, and we're actually gonna build throughout the year the solar system in our living room, probably, because <laughs> there's no fan in there. So we will probably put it up in the ceiling and we're just going to start learning a little bit about space, but very light, nothing too crazy. Um, mostly that's kind of like craft hour and I will tell him a little bit about these planets while he is painting um, and making his little models to hang up in the house, which I'm actually really, really excited about for that one. All right, the next thing here that I was not on my radar at all, but I stumbled upon it for a really good price, so I couldn't resist, is from 100 Days of Practice. This is their Hands on Steam for K, 
This theme book does cover a number of different topics, which actually do support what we're doing in BFSU, which is why I was like, maybe we should do this. This is pretty cool. But we'll be doing some physical science topics, specifically force, talking about pushing and pulling. We are going to be in the life science department, going to be talking about things like animal houses, the five senses, living versus non-living. So again, supporting the other stuff we're doing. Earth science, we're going to be talking a little bit about reducing, reusing, recycling, wind, the sun. Again, it's all kind of connecting. So I think that this will be a really good, simple way for us to spend a little bit of time each day that kind of connects all of these different pieces that we are using. And the last thing that I want to talk about is while I was scheduling, I do believe that there are going to be periods of time that we are going to have gaps or it will be good to take a pause because there is a lot that we are working on. So I actually came up with three books that are fiction books specifically tied to science that I thought would be really fun to read that I'm going to add as a resource in this upcoming year. And that is going to be um, the Berenstain Bears Big Book of, Nat of Science and Nature. This is broken into three different sections. So we would read like a third of it at a time um, just as like a break. And then we also have two different books. I grabbed the first two Zoe and Sassafras books. So we have Dragons and Marshmallows and Monsters and Mold, and we will be reading these as well. The last thing that I just want to kind of talk about with science is we will also be watching the Magic School Bus. We do have this on DVD, which I'm excited about. Got it for a good deal. Can't complain. Um, so I did get the Magic School Bus and we will be watching that just throughout the school year. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that is our science. So you can see there's a lot to it, but each component is not, we're not doing 180 days of every component. So again, we're doing BFSU between two to three days a week, project learning tree once every other week. We are doing the nature study from Blossom and Root once a week, if we keep it. We are going to be doing the STEAM uh, a little bit every single day. And Studies Weekly, which is that health one, we are going to be doing between three and five days out of the week, depending on the complexity of the article. And then the um, three R's program is going to kind of fit that same cycle at the end. And then if we ever need a break, we have our space theme, which we're doing once a month. And we are going to be doing our read alouds, which is just exciting. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.